games. So we'll get you ready for those by recapping Saturday's action, looking ahead to Sunday's action. <clears throat> First, I have to let you know that every Sunday edition of Weekend Waypoints is brought to you by Active Wealth Management. Ford Stokes and Sam Davis are the, the guys over there I've been working with, college baseball guys, big college baseball fans. And I mentioned this on an earlier episode, but in case you're you're newly joining us, uh, interestingly enough, Sam Davis uh, used to, at, in his days at the University of Kansas, worked with the baseball program there at the University of Kansas. So hard to be more of a college baseball guy than that, given his hands-on his hands -on experience with it. Um, <clears throat> so those are the guys you'll want to talk to over there, Ford Stokes and Sam Davis. Ford is a member of the Forbes Finance Council and contributes a monthly financial article focused on how to successfully plan for retirement at Forbes.com. And uh, to book your financial complimentary financial consultation with Ford Stokes, visit retirementresults.com and click the schedule the consultation button in the upper right corner or call 1-888-814-0304. There's also the call to action we've had at the, at the scrolling on the bottom there for a while now visit activewealth.com and click the schedule consultation to get a 401k review which is a $1,500 value at no cost let's get into the baseball why don't we um packed day obviously everybody was in action the the series that started thursday wrapping up the series that began friday we're in their middle day so of course we, we had a lot going on a lot to watch a lot to keep up with it was a full day because we had games to start early we had games that went late into the night with with Auburn and Texas A and M, and that's as good a place as any to start. Let, our game of the day is Texas A and M ten Auburn nine in twelve innings. I will pull up the box score here. I apologize to Auburn fans for having you uh, you know re relive this a little bit. Maybe you can you know shut off the live stream and come back in a few minutes if if that would make you feel better. I mean, I just <clears throat> you feel for Auburn. This team is not this bad. They're not one and eight bad in the SEC. They they've had a tough schedule. Yes. Some things aren't going, aren't necessarily going their way. Sure, that's a part of it too. <clears throat> I think this team has a run in them. Uh, we'll just have to see what that run means. I mentioned yesterday, we kind of thought that maybe a run might mean, hey, this team will, like last year, make a push to host a regional. Um, maybe, maybe it's more like, hey, this team will push to just be an at-large team, and you know, that's that's obviously a successful season in a lot of ways. But um, you know, the one and eight start is just not not optimal. And, and if you're Auburn, I think among the things that happened in this game that was they were troublesome is just it's another short outing for Joseph Gonzalez. And, you know, you're, you're increasingly becoming worried, or at least I am increasingly becoming worried that this just kind of is what it is for Joseph Gonzalez at this point. You know, his, his velo has, hasn't consistently come back this spring. It's, you know, it's more like high 80s instead of low 90s. The command just isn't there. And he's never been a high strikeout guy so that you can't really look at the strikeout numbers and extrapolate much. But you know, he's a guy who um, what didn't really walk people was pounding the zone, a lot of ground balls. And, and he's just getting, he's just getting hit hard. Um, you know, he still gets his fair share of ground balls because of the movement, but he gets, he just gets harder, hit harder than he, than he was before. So that's obviously a, a tough thing for Auburn, but they, they're always going to fight. This program is always, always going to fight. And that's what you saw here really back and forth early. Auburn comes back late, got some big, big hits, especially for, from pinch hitters. That was kind of a, a theme here you see in the eighth inning with Christian Hall, Christian Hall's homer. That was a pinch hit home run. Uh, you see in the ninth, the big blow to tie it at nine, Gavin Miller with a pinch hit home run. So <clears throat> they got clutch hits. Um, they did enough in the bullpen to kind of at least slow AM down uh, throughout the middle and late innings. And it just wasn't enough. AM gets the win on a Ted Burton walk off single. And you just, you know, what are you supposed to do with this AM lineup, right? I mean, you look at the, the top three in this lineup, Gavin Grohovac, Jace Laviolette, and, and Braden Montgomery. You know, with Laviolette and Montgomery, we have both of those guys. We just did our positional power rankings last week at D1 Baseball, and those guys are both in the top five in, in the outfield rankings, right? And Grohovac is, you know, probably going to challenge to be a, a national freshman of the year. Uh, type of guy. So then, when you when you talk about the, the the depth pieces like Ted Burton, who's having a really nice year, and Hayden Schott, who's having a really nice year, those two guys you see here combined to go six for eight yesterday. It's just lineup is just, and it, it, it's to the point where you know Ryan Targotch hasn't necessarily gotten going yet, right? But that's a guy who was a key contributor on an Omaha team and has been a very good you know uh, contributor for several years now. And and he's just kind of like, well, if if we get him going, that's a little icing on the cake. <laughs> but they don't they don't necessarily have to have him, right? So impressive stuff for AM there to get that sweep. Again, for Auburn, you, you feel 
you know, you feel for them a little bit because, you know, you, you could tell that it's not, they're not that far away necessarily. They're scoring plenty of runs in the most part, but the, the pitching has been, ha, has been the issue. And, and that's a little troublesome just because we, we thought that maybe that was where this team might be stronger this year, but it feels very, to this point feels very similar to last year where it's Auburn's in a lot of scraps to try to win games, right. And, and trying to outscore opponents as opposed to, uh, being successful in run prevention. So uh, t- tough loss there for Auburn. Big win for AM. Uh, fun game that went late into the night there. Uh, some comments here. Uh, Carl Dunn coming in on YouTube. Uh, happy Easter. Thank you, Carl. You as well. Uh, LSU is disappointing this weekend. Got a lot to fix. They're better than two and seven. Totally agree. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I wrote on the site last night kind of a takeaways piece. Um, on the weekend with some thoughts on LSU and, and Arkansas. And that, that's more or less what I said. A lot to fix. A flawed team, yes. Struggling right now, sure. But not as bad as 2-7, and seven, much like Auburn. Not as bad at 2-7 at, at and seven as you would think. Um, you know, really the results have been what you might have expected, right? I mean, you want to win home series, but losing one to Florida is not anything to uh, to sneeze at. And then if, this was a uh, you know, a tough road series. This was always going to be a tough series to win for LSU. The, the one that sticks out is, you know, losing the state series to begin the season. But even then, I mean, if 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 LSU was three and six at this point, I think we could have a lot easier just be like, look, it's the schedule. They just need to keep their heads above water. It's, for, for whatever reason, it's a one game difference, but that feels harder to do it two and seven. I get that. Uh, my biggest concern with LSU right now is the, is the bullpen, frankly. Um, it, it just... Griffin Herring has been a revelation. He's been great. Um, he was great in the middle game of this series on Friday, uh, but he threw 70 pitches. And like on one hand, that's an asset, right? That you have a reliever who you can put out there for 70 pitches. He threw four and two thirds, struck out eight guys. He was mostly dominant while he was out there. But on the other hand, I have to imagine that's not how they really would like to use him. Like that that's a lot <laughs> to put on one guy. Um, but it, it feels like a, a like I said yesterday, a trust circle of one in the bullpen, and that that's him. Um, there were some positives. Gavin Gidry threw two shutout innings yesterday, and that was his first uh, scoreless outing in in a while. Um, it was his longest outing of the season. Maybe maybe that's something there, but you saw some guys pitch this weekend. You know, Cam Johnson was an example that, you know, hadn't really been part of the the weekend mix. The, Clearly, they're trying to find find some guys they can trust on the weekends, and it's just not not really happening. So that that's that's the biggest concern. That thing they they're going to need to clean up to, to change their fortunes moving forward. Um, Dylan Ward, another happy Easter. Thank you, Dylan. You as well. Arkansas's Will McIntyre is a top three reliever, not only SEC but all of college baseball. And yeah, I buy that. Sure. Um, he's just been he's everything you could have asked for i mean he, he comes in and, and can do the long relief thing which he did in, in the opener of the series and then yesterday he comes into a a tight spot bases loaded uh two outs in the eighth inning uh, relieving hunter deets who was making his debut and he gets out of a jam and then comes back out and throws the ninth i thought they might go to someone else for the ninth i think it, at one point they had you know christian fouch warming and then uh stone hewlett was warming to, uh, assuming to face a lefty. I don't know where they were in the lineup at that point. I forget, but um, so they, I thought they might go to someone else, but McIntyre comes back out and ultimately closes it out. So um, anyway, so that's, you know, um, that's, you know, for, for, for Arkansas, that's, I think been the, well, the, the bullpen as a whole, Will McIntyre is kind of the, the biggest example, but that feels like the, the, the most important thing that's happened with Arkansas this year. We knew the rotation was going to be great. We knew on paper the pitching depth was going to be good, but we hear that story all the time. We thought LSU's pitching depth was going to be really good, right? And, and some things have happened there with injuries and what have you, but um, we see that's not the case. But with Arkansas, it has been. And Will McIntyre, I think, has been the biggest example of you know, he's stepped up, which has taken some pressure off of some other guys who might otherwise have been in more prominent roles. Now they're in roles they're a little more comfortable with. Um, yeah, Lindsay, my buddy Lindsey Crosby um, <clears throat> commenting here on, on Auburn. I'll put it here on the screen. It says, now we're used to it at this point in the season. It's been a murderer's row to open conference play, but they make a run of the back half of almost every single season in recent history. And that's totally true. And why I say they've got a run in them. Um, you know, you just hope that that uh, they can, you know, just it's like a like a boxer, right? You gotta like you gotta have a strong jaw and and take the uh, take the the punches early in the in, in the in the fight, and then be able to punch back late when the other guy's 
tired and exhausted. And, and that's, you know, that's kind of the way Auburn operates. And I have a lot of confidence that they'll make a run. It's just a matter of, of how far that run gets them. Uh, Jamie Roberts on YouTube. Happy Easter. Hope Bob Walker treated you well. Uh, thank you, Jamie. It did. I had a great time. Uh, friendly folks, beautiful setting, um, a, a great ballpark. Anybody who's who's been, whether you're an Arkansas fan, obviously, or or a visiting fan, I think you could appreciate Bob Walker as a as a great facility. And the weather was was perfect, which is the first weekend of the season where I could say that it's been a lot of rain or cold or what have you. Um, weather was was just about perfect this weekend in Fayetteville. Let's move on to talking player of the day and strap in, folks, because it was a pretty offensive day. <laughs> Uh, for uh, in the SEC. So we've got a, a relatively long list of, of names to, to go down here. So bear with me. Uh, we will get through it together here. Um, for AM, I talked about them and their offensive day. Braden Montgomery, three for six with a double, a home run. Hayden Schott mentioned him a little bit earlier, three for three with, with a walk, got on all four times or got, got on each time. So that, um, you know, impressive day for those two guys. Uh, Charlie Condon in a losing effort. Uh, what a wild game. My goodness. 16 to 11 Tennessee win there. Uh, Georgia at one point had what we thought might be a comfortable lead. I think they were up nine to four at some point. I was listening to some of that as I drove back to my hotel after the game at, at bomb, but uh, Condon just continues to be otherworldly five for six with a double two home runs and three RBI. I'm not exactly sure what you're supposed to do to, to stop him at this point, but it, I guess it is what it is. Uh, Tennessee on the other side, of course, when you score 16 runs, you tend to have some good offensive performances. Dylan Dryling, two for four with two home runs and seven RBI. Uh, he hit a grand slam in that game. Dalton Bargo also had a grand slam for Tennessee. Blake Burke was three for four with a double and a home run. That is his 40th career home run. He is now tied for first uh, program history for home runs behind um, Luke Lipsius, who he took over for, uh, who he took over for positionally. Um, you know, when, when he came in there at first base. So, uh, you know, he's kind of quietly just, uh, you know, been among the best power hitters in, in Tennessee history. It feels kind of quiet because as a freshman, he only played, you know, he hit a bunch of home runs, but he was only a, only a part-time guy. Um, and then last year, you know, he hit a decent number of home runs again, but he, he wasn't very good in conference play. So it felt kind of quiet, but here he's, he seems to have put it together. He's having a really nice year. Um, and is being rewarded for it. Christian Moore, by the way, also not far down on that career home runs list. So by the end of the season, you know, Tennessee could have, you know, maybe it's two best home run hitters by, by total, at least in, in program history. That would be, that would be kind of impressive. A big day there in general. Uh, where did I leave off here? Okay. South Carolina um, got a win, needed it, but got a win against Alabama to salvage a game there. Cole Messina three for four with a double and a walk in that game. On the Alabama side of that game, Gage Miller, three for three with a double, a triple, and a walk. And then a Will Hodo, three for four with two home runs in that one. In Arkansas LSU, uh, Will Edmondson, a big a big game. And I, I wrote about this a little bit in the uh, the takeaways from the weekend, that one thing that stands out about Arkansas is, is I guess you could, we could say oh, it's, it's a lineup without uh, a lot of star power. And I think that's right on some level. But there's depth there. They started 12 different players this weekend, and every day it was kind of somebody different. Will Edmondson was really good in the finale, three for three with a double and a walk. He also scored the walk-off run on the Hudson White double in the middle game of the series, uh, coming around from first base on that. Good good bit of base running for them uh, for him there. On the LSU side of it, Mac Bingham, two for four with two home runs. That's important for LSU, getting him going. He'd, he'd kind of been a little bit up and down, but – both of his home runs were absolutely crushed. So big things there from him. And Michael Braswell, really nice day. Two for two with a hit by pitch and a walk. His average is now above 300. Um, he's performing really, really well. He's kind of exceeded offensively my expectations. He's he's not that physical. He's not you know super athletic. Um, but he, he does a good job of getting the barrel on the ball. And he's been rewarded with a, with a 300 batting average so far this season. So impressive stuff there. Um, Mississippi State, uh, Connor, Connor Heisick three for five with two home runs and six RBIs. They came back and won their game against Florida to even that series. They've got a rubber game coming up uh, today, Sunday, to settle that series in Gainesville. Dakota Jordan, three for five with two home runs in that game as well. Uh, let's talk Kentucky, who put up a bunch of runs, uh, 17 of them against Ole Miss. Unfortunately for Ole Miss, it seems like some of the issues from last year have cropped back up when you consider – the injury to JT Quinn, Grayson Sonye out of the rotation this weekend. Um, you know, Liam Doyle into the rotation, but Liam Doyle didn't pitch all that well this time around. Um, 
feels like they're spinning their wheels quite a bit in the rotation right now is Ole Miss, which feels fairly similar to where they were last year, right? So that, that has to be a little bit of a concern there for Ole Miss, but, but Kentucky really took advantage. A few guys here to highlight. Nick Lopez, who's been so steady for them, three for four with four runs scored. James McCoy, four for four with a home run. But the player of the day is Nolan McCarthy of Kentucky, and in large part because he was a guy who was struggling. And he's a, he's a veteran. He's, he's skilled. Um, he's athletic. He's a good outfielder. He's, he's got a lot of tools, um, and, and he's got a little bit better every year. Kentucky kind of this year looking for him to maybe break out. It hadn't happened yet, but maybe this is a, a sign that that is on the way to happening. He went three for six with two home runs, six runs batted in, and four runs scored. So a big day for uh, Nolan McCarthy of Kentucky. In that big win for the Wildcats, they clinched that series. Uh, don't look now. You know, Kentucky is 7-1 and one in the league. They are 23-4. and four. Um, I, I mentioned yesterday, you can you can nitpick a little bit with the schedule and, and, and look at who they played so far. But, you know, that Georgia series win looks better now. And um, they're just taking care of business, which is just kind of what you need to do. That's the pathway in the SEC. You, you know, beat the teams you should beat. And then against the teams that – our toss-ups are the better you just don't get swept, right? And, and that's that's the formula. And Kentucky's so far so good on matching that formula. Okay, let's uh, catch up on some of these comments here. Um, Armstrong Grappling on, on YouTube, LSU going to win out. Uh, hey, man, I <laughs> wouldn't put anything past this team. You know, Jay, Jay Johnson and that staff do a really good job. I, you know, wouldn't wouldn't put anything past them. They certainly do have some things to tire out, though. Um Carl Dunn on YouTube. Jay Johnson will fix this team. Just needs to get play setters to set up the big bats. Haven't happened yet. Agreed. That's kind of a thing. I think we thought, um, you know, guys like I mean, there's a reason Tommy White is hitting leadoff yesterday. I mean, I think it is because they haven't found those guys to put at the top of the lineup to set the table for White and Jared Jones, Hayden Trevinsky, et cetera. And you know, I thought maybe I think Paxton Kling was thought to be that kind of guy. He's struggled at the plate that hasn't really worked out. Stephen Milam, you know, was so hot early in the season. It was like, hey, maybe this guy's ready to do it as a freshman. He's cooled off a little. He he's steadied the ship now a little bit. He's still hitting over 300. But is he ready for that as a freshman? Uh, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so that, that is a, a little bit of a, a concern there. Uh, and then Carl says, hope you make it to Baton Rouge soon. The food and drinks are waiting for you. Thank you, Carl. I understand that to be the case. They, uh, yes, historically, they've I've been fed well in Baton Rouge. Uh, hoping to get down there this season. Um, that is that is definitely true. We'll, we'll see what the uh, what the second half of the season holds there. Uh, Chris C. on YouTube, who's your top three teams right now? Uh, don't hold me to this because I'm just doing this off the top of my head. But Arkansas is one. Um, I think you have to take a and &M right now just based on on what they're doing um boy and then it gets interesting right like i feel pretty confident in those two right now but you know tennessee are, are they going to lose a series today to georgia like we have florida ranked high still but mm, you know uh, that that's obviously been a struggle vanderbilt swept missouri but okay you know it's missouri uh so I, i'll put it this way like those two i feel good about and then take your pick for team number three it's like whoever's playing well right this minute right? Um, you know, maybe, maybe it's Kentucky, right? I mean, based on the record, I don't know. Like the point is, I don't know. <laughs> like those top two, I feel good about. And then at three, it really feels like it's anybody's ball game. That's an interesting subplot. I think to follow as the season goes on. Sean Miller on YouTube, will Auburn get it going or does last night crush their season one and eight, but essentially against top five teams in the country, uh, Tennessee will either write their season or end it. Um, yeah. So I don't think the season is ended. Um, you know, you're, you're, nine games into a 30 game schedule, you know, most of your sket as he sees a schedule still in front of you. So I don't think it's ended anything. It's obviously not going well. I don't, you know, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie to you. Um, but I think you're, I think you're right about, you know, they've got, a, they've got one more weekend to kind of get it figured out. I mean, if they, obviously, if you're looking at one and 11, that's obviously, um, that's obviously not great. <laughs> if you're, if you're looking at one and 11, that might feel like, okay, that might be a nail in the coffin for, you know, this team um, reaching some of the goals they had for the season. But I, I can't see them, especially with the flaws we've seen with Tennessee, where the pitching, you know, even Drew Beam has not been has not been as good as expected. AJ Causey got hit a little bit. Um, you know, 
I, I would expect Auburn to have success in that series, whether it's certainly not getting swept. So I think they'll do enough in that series to give you some hope that, okay, like things are moving in the right direction. So I, I don't think it's over yet, Sean. You know, Lindsey Crosby mentioned in here that um, in the comments here that they always make a second half run. That's true. Um, we'll see. But it has been a very, very tough schedule. Uh, quickly wrapping up some other stuff. Uh, yeah, Chris on YouTube says poor Auburn plays Tennessee next. Yeah, they just have to hope that those the cracks in the foundation of the Tennessee pitching staff that we've seen kind of carry over because Auburn can swing it like scoring runs hasn't been the problem. So it might be a high scoring series there. Um, and then Carl again on, on YouTube, LSU versus Fanny next weekend, bracing ourselves for the Vandy Whistler. Yep. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Let's do picture of the day real quick. And, and this is a opposite of the, the player of the day list. It is very short because there were a lot of runs scored in the SEC yesterday. I've got two names here. The first of which is Carter Holton against Missouri. Again, I think that'll be a theme starting pitchers against Missouri. Sorry, Missouri, no disrespect, but man, they're really struggling offensively. But Carter Holton, seven innings pitched, five hits, one run, one walk, eight strikeouts. But the pitcher of the day, Gerangelo Sanja against Florida, really impressive stuff from him. Seven innings pitched, five hits, two runs, two walks, eight strikeouts. The two walks there feels like the most important number because he had backslid a little bit in terms of, of giving free passes the last several starts but that's really a solid start against a good Florida offense that, that will take its walks if you give them to them. They're pretty aggressive swingers, but they also have good approaches, you know, with with taking the walks when they're presented to them. So Drangelo Sanja, pitcher of the day there. Let's quickly wrap with the Sunday game of the day, today's game of the day. I'm going Georgia-Tennessee, mostly because, I mean, they scored 27 runs yesterday combined. How many runs today? 40? I don't know. Like, and that's, that's kind of ugly and not fun necessarily, but I, I am intrigued to see what, what that number is, or does it shift the other way? And after yesterday, for some reason, today's just one of those games where it's four to three, I could see that too, because weird things happen in this sport, but uh, that's my game of the day, Georgia and Tennessee, uh, they're in Knoxville, a rubber game. And again, with Georgia, they, they continue to, to surprise even yesterday, they, they take a loss, but man, um, the way they competed against a, a really good team is, is impressive again. So that they're a team I've, I've continued to have my eye on here, and I'm fascinated by what's going to happen today. Um, last couple comments here that are getting in. Liz on YouTube, Tennessee doesn't have a midweek this week. Uh, full rest going into Auburn. Yeah, I mean, that is an advantage there. Um, the, the flip side of it, though, is, is, is with Tennessee struggling a little bit on the mound, the midweek game could theoretically have been an opportunity to – audition some other arms for the following weekend um, because sometimes you don't want to take that risk on a weekend series, especially with today being a rubber game. Um, so I would agree generally that, yeah, that not having a midweek game is, is good to get everybody, you know, people who have various like, you know, uh, just, you know, thing nicked up, you know, get guys kind of back to full strength. But I think there is a, a flip side argument to that as well. And then uh, I'll end on this on YouTube. Hog Barbecue says, hope you enjoyed your time at Bomb. I did. Thank you to everyone for being very hospitable. Um, Arkansas fans were very good about checking in on me this weekend and asking how, how, how I was going. Had a really great time. Looking forward to coming back. And if, if, you're, if the Razorbacks continue to win at this clip, I'm sure I will see plenty of them this season. That is going to do it for this edition of Weekend Waypoints, a production of SEC Extra at D1Baseball.com. Uh, the Sunday episode, as always, presented by Active Wealth Management. Ford Stokes and Sam Davis are your guys over there. Uh, go to activewealth.com. Click schedule a consultation. Get your free 401k review of $1,500 value at no cost to you. Uh, thank you all for watching. I will talk to you again Friday morning. We're back on a normal schedule this coming week. So it'll be Friday morning for our next edition of Weekend Waypoints. Enjoy the baseball today, everyone, and happy Easter.